On this episode, we do a lot of considerate and mindful testing. Die, you scum! And Christian gets too cocky. There, here he comes! Here comes that boy! Oh yeah, he's attacking me! But nah, bro, nah, bro! With predictable results. <laughs> he got me! Mm, hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Des. Again! Man, I'm tired today a little bit. Uh, I've been running around all day in, uh, in downtown and I'm like oh, spent and icky and so forth. But I want to record some episodes because I'm really excited about what we're about to do in, uh, in our shmup. So we are at a critical juncture now. We are working on... Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Um, my headphones were set a little bit too loud. I have to down down my volume. All right, all right. Ah, the beautiful tones of our of our of our uh, intro music. Start screen music, right? So we are at a cricket juncture. We have beautiful flying animation, and uh, we have uh, our enemies doing attack runs now. They change change in attacks, um, but we had a thing. Um, Doggy Zone quest last time around, which I wanted to address right away. So um, the, we have like this little function here that picks uh, a random enemy that is supposed to do the attack run. Um, but what this function does is it just picks really, really just random enemies. And we want to maybe find out a way of just picking the enemies on the on the lower rows, kind of like further down. So it, it, the, it's not like an enemy all, all the way in, the, in behind, you know, in the back rows is starting to do attack runs, but only the enemies uh, in the front. And I, I again, because I'm pre-recording all those episodes, I cannot see your beautiful solutions. I hopefully, hopefully, we're going to see some uh, some interesting uh, solutions in the comment section or in the, in the Discord. But I will um, talk uh, talk you through my solution uh, on this, like my approach to this. Hi everybody, here's Christian from the, the future with a little assist. Christian from the past didn't do a bad job at explaining the algorithm, but I think um, it works a little bit better if you have some visual aids and I have created some now so I can show you more clearly what the algorithm does. So first of all, let us spawn our enemies. So this is a level full of enemies. And what our algorithm will do is exploit the fact that we are generating all of these enemies row by row. So um, if you display the numbers that are associated with enemies, the number of the enemy in an array, uh, you will see that the top row has low numbers like one, two, three, four, and so forth. And the bottom row has the highest numbers because the bottom enemies were added last to the array. And that's convenient because what we've been trying to do is we're trying to nominate one of the uh, last 10 enemies as the next attacker, right? So this is going to be enemies from, in this case, from number 31 to 40. So what our algorithm we're going to try to do now is to try to, you know, pick a number from 31 to 40 and then pick that enemy associated with the number and nominate them as a potential attacker. And the way we're going to do this is basically we're going to work backwards. So first we have to dump, generate a random number from 0 to 9 and then we're going to subtract that number from the number of enemies we have on the board. So we have 40 enemies here right now. The highest number is 40. And we're going to subtract a number from 0 to 9 from that number. And this will basically give us one of the enemies from the bottom row uh, that we see here, the enemies with the pink numbers. Now this algorithm has a bit of a problem and that problem is that it, it starts kind of like malfunctioning a little bit once uh, some of the enemies are removed from the area. So I'm going to remove some enemies as you can see. Uh, some of the uh, uh, pink numbers start appearing in the second row. So uh, sometimes you know the enemies that get launched are not necessarily going to be in the bottom row. And additionally as you can see there on the left side there is like enemies number 15 and 16. Those could be potentially launched but because the number that associated with them is not high enough they are not far enough down the, uh, the array. The algorithm won't even consider them as potential candidates. And so, you know, the algorithm is not perfect, um, but most of the time it will do a fair job. Okay, so let's start programming the algorithm. So this is the picking function. And here is where we have to decide which enemy to pick. And we're going to start by generating a random number between zero and nine. So we're going to create a variable called my index. And we're going to assign this floor R&D 
10. Oops, not 19, 10. And this should generate a number between 0 and 9, an integer number between 0 and 9. Because as I always said, the random number generator will generate a number between 0 and whatever you put in the argument, uh, but it will never actually reach the number in the argument. So in this case, we're going to have always something less than 10, and that is the maximum number that we generate is going to be 9. Okay, so the next step is going to be to subtract this number from the number of enemies we have, and we're going to just basically keep reusing the same variable here, so we don't have like you know, multiple variables. We're going to have enough variables as it is, as you will see. So I'm going to uh, just say my index equals number of enemies, minus uh, my index. So this should get us the number of one of the 10 final enemies in the array, the pink enemies that we just saw in the visualization. And what the only thing that's left to do now is to basically just say, um, you know, the candidate that we're going to uh, try to, uh, you know, launch an attack with is going to be um, my n equals uh, enemies, uh, square brackets, my index. We're going to take the enemy at that position with this number and we're going to nominate them to do the attack. Now this has this will work for most of the time. Let's try this. All right, there's an enemy from uh, the bottom row, from the bottom row, from the bottom row. Everything works flawlessly. Now there's a second row here and again we said that sometimes this happens with this algorithm. Everything's works peachy so far. I'm going to start shooting at some enemies. Everything works peachy. Oh, so good. We Our algorithm works. Oh, I love it so much. This is such a good algorithm. There's just nothing that can go wrong here. Oh, oh. <laughs> no. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, it says that my n is a nil value. So somehow uh, my n was nil, which means this was nil. Uh, and I can already reveal what the problem is. Um, this algorithm has a problem when there are less than 10 enemies in the array. And you can imagine what happens then. Then basically we can sometimes generate a number that is higher than the number of enemies we have. And if we subtract that higher number from the number of enemies we have, we're going to get a negative number in the index and uh, trying to access a negative number uh, will result in a nil. The solution here is going to be um, just taking this 10 here and reducing it whenever we encounter a situation when there is less than 10 enemies in the array. So we're going to create a new variable here. We're going to say local max num. We're going to set it to 10. And then we're going to plug this um, uh, this uh, variable. We're going to plug this instead of the ten. So usually, you know, we're going to still generate a number between zero and nine. Uh, but now the quest or the goal we have is to reduce max num down from ten in situations where there are less than ten enemies in the array. And I'm going to let a Christian from the past take over here because he's very very excited at showing you a cool function that you can use for this. So we want to get this this max number, we're going to leave it at 10, unless the number of enemies is lower than 10, and then we want to set it to the number of enemies that we have. Um, a way, simple way of doing this is basically say mm, min. There's a function called min. This is a really useful function. There's there's three useful functions that, ah, that you use so, so often. And that's why I actually wanted to show this off. So there's min, there's max, and there's mid. Mid is the best. Uh, okay, so A, B, A, B, A, B, C. Here is how this works. This is so good. So min, the function min, will uh, take two, par two um, parameters, two uh, arguments, and will return the argument from the two that is smaller. Uh, max is basically the same, but uh, other way around. It will take those two arguments and it will return the argument that is bigger. And mid is the best. It will the, return the argument that is in the middle. So that is not the smallest and not the biggest. It is somewhere in the middle. If two arguments are the same, it will just pick one of those. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh, so useful. So in this case, we are running min uh, against the number of enemies. 
And if the number of, enemy, number of enemies is greater than 10, then we're gonna, the min will return 10. But if the number of enemies drops below 10, it will just return number of enemies. Exactly what we wanted. Exactly. And now, of course, we could even take this now and just plug it directly into this function. But now we have like all those functions in, in, inside each other. And ugh, let's just not do that. Let's just not do that. I think that's, that might be more real. Mm, let's run this and see if this, this works. And let's just observe which enemies are getting to attack. Lower row, that's good. Yeah, see, second row. Okay, that's not ideal, oh, but okay, now lower row. Lower row. Oh, that's good. These are good, good candidates. Second row, but I don't mind in this case. Yeah, okay. See, this one flew through the other enemy, so that was not ideal. This is kind of like one of the situations where my this, this function doesn't it doesn't re, uh, deliver perfect results. But so far so good. But you know, this is this is not difficult. This is you know, uh, let's let's speed this process up a little bit. Okay, now it's getting interesting. Okay, we're getting we're getting into lower numbers. Oh, we didn't have a spawn now. There we go. There's another one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Perfect. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> yes, baby! I still got it! I still got it. Even after a day of walking around with a crying baby, I still can pull off some weird math. And if I can pull this off, so can you. Um, so yeah, this um, takes care of the picking function that is all about, you know, um, uh, picking the right enemies to do the next attack, which is perfect. Um, something that we want to maybe tweak at some point is this uh, variable here, and actually I might want to actually put it in, in, a, um, in, a, in a variable. Mm, let's just put it in a variable, I think that might be a good idea. So when we're spawning the waste, because I want to maybe tweak this variable, and um, so this might be a good idea. So um, let's um, define this re here real quick, and let's say something like, uh, let's just actually define it at the beginning as well here in the start game function. Let's scroll a little bit down maybe. Yeah, like something like here. Um, we're gonna call this, um, how we're gonna call this? Um, attack freak frequency. And we're gonna set it to 60. Uh, it's gonna be the default. And we're gonna, at the beginning of the level, we're gonna set the attack freak. Um, um, we're gonna define what the attack freak for this level is. Um, and so we can make the frequency a bit higher in later levels. This is one of the knobs that will be available to us to tweak uh, the difficulty of the level, right? And we're gonna plug the attack freak in right into the picking function, right? So if the Attack freak, if that gets lower, then the enemies will spawn faster. So we're gonna test this real quick. I'm gonna set it to 10, which should get us a barrage of enemies. Do, 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 do. Yeah, they're attacking, they're attacking. So good. So good. Die, you scum. Ah, freedom! <laughs> oh, man. Good. So let us move on to the part where we are going to talk about how the enemies actually um, attack. Uh, I'm going to tweak the at attacking of the enemies because this is something that is not ideal right now. All right, so we said like here there's the attack and we all we do is like move them vertically down and we want to maybe just make this a little bit more complicated. Uh, especially we want to maybe differentiate between different, different attacks for different uh, enemies that we have right now. So let's do this real quick. So we're going to go let's differentiate between the different enemies. So we're gonna go if, um, now I noticed that we're actually not saving anywhere what kind of type of an enemy an enemy is. So maybe we should do that. Uh, let's go real quick to the spawning function, that's right. When we, uh, I, let's save the end type, let's save that in the property of the enemy, that would be kind of really good. Uh, so let's go my n, 
dot type equals n type. Um, we're changing the sprite and everything, but the sprites are not a good way to differentiate enemies from each other. I think just like a type would be uh, probably the best choice here. So if um, my n type equals one, then that's a green guy. Else if my n dot type uh, equals two, then that's a red guy. Um, then if it's three, it's, if it's three, then it's gonna be spinny ship, spinny ship. And if it's four, well, this is suppo supposed to be a boss, but I'm gonna spill the beans. It's not gonna be the boss. I did tests with this. I went to the doggy zone, as I told you. I went, went to the doggy zone and it's, it's a bit small for a boss. It is just 16 pixels in size. It's not even fully 16 pixels in size. It's a beautiful animation, but on, on a, I'm gonna actually change it back to this being just a normal, normal dude, just just, just an innocent, innocent man <laughs> of an enemy. Uh, this is gonna be just an enemy, the bigger enemy with more health and so forth. But we are also gonna uh, yellow ship. It's gonna be a ship that just comes up in the later levels and we're gonna do a, a extra super nice graphic for the actual boss. And we're gonna talk about this when we get to the boss episode. All right, so I wanna have all these four different ships. I want them to have distinct attack patterns. Um, now, something that we're all, always gonna do, and this is kind of like something that we have to think about a little bit, something that we always want to do probably in this in this situation, we always want to move our, our guys. We're always gonna, like, each one of those guys will be moving. So I'm thinking actually at this point um, to include a function, a universal moving function um, that will, that will just move things on the screen. And it's not gonna be just too difficult. Let me, let me just show you real quick function move and um, we're gonna go um, ob object obj and it's gonna be obj dot x plus equals uh, obj dot speed x and the same with y that's it. That's that's all that function does. It's just like moving an object, uh, an object that has speed x and speed y property set. So we can set some speeds for our enemies. Like, hey, you know, in this case, we're gonna set speed to uh, um, sy to 1.7, and we're just moving it, and it's good. Like, it's it's uh, we don't have to you know do the math anymore. We're just gonna set the parameters and let the enemy go. And I want to test this function right away. Um, so for example here and the green guy we're just gonna move it and we're gonna set uh, my n dot sy we're gonna set it to 1.7 uh, we're not gonna add it we're just gonna set it to 1.7 we're gonna set the speed the y speed of this this enemy is gonna be 1.7 and just and move it and that's it uh, something I want to do at this point as well is uh, in our universal function um, where we make the sprite, I'm gonna actually add speed x and speed y as a universal property. I want all of our things to have an s, x, and s, y, even if we never end up using those for some things. I'm gonna start using this move function for a lot of things now, because I think a lot of things are gonna have speed x and speed y that, like this is a useful way of setting things in motion. So. Um, green guy, this is the attack function of the green guy. Uh, we're setting uh, the speed for the um, uh, in vertical direction. We do it every frame. We don't have to, but we do it every frame nonetheless. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> ah, right, 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 right. <laughs> I said move OBJ. <laughs> It should be move my end. <laughs> I was getting like, oh no, oh no, it got to me. The tiredness got to me. All right, good. The guys are attacking. Good. I don't like how this looks. <laughs> They're fairly fast, so that's good. But I feel like they are um, 
They, I mean, we talked about this, right? There's no animation curve involved, and, but I don't want to make this too complicated, so I want to keep this keep this around because you could add here, you know, acceleration and so forth. Mm. Uh, and we might later, um, but for now, I want to maybe add more um, more organic movements in a different way. And I I think a lot of people want to see that. Let us bring in the sign function. Mm, that's right, the sign function. Let's look at this real quick again. So you remember maybe this guy, right? You remember this, the wavy line, right? We had to, we used this for blinking. A uh, bit of an overkill to just use for blinking, but I wanted to show you it back then so you remember it now as well. So now we're going to actually use it for something that is actually wavy. Because the blinking wasn't really wavy. We just use it for something that is repeatedly... Uh, you know, something that repeats itself. But now we are actually going to use the way we think. Sign function, man, we're going to talk about it later. We're going to actually use it for what it's actually meant to be do doing. But actually, this is meant for drawing circles and so forth. But we are actually interested in the fact, in the fact that it's nice and wavy. <laughs> and today we're just going to exploit that fact that it's nice and wavy. It's, it's very, very convenient here because it goes... Like the results are min 1 and minus 1, it waves between 1 and minus 1, so it goes positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative, that's nice. Uh, now, it, the argument it takes, I already talked about this, just ignore the pies, the pies are imp not, not important, there's no pies here. A Pico 8 works a bit differently. No pies, no pipes, only vibes. <laughs> uh, the only thing that we have to remember is the Twitter to get the wavy line from the sign function. Uh, you have to get in comma values. You can't have integers because then it will always skip, you know, from this to this to this. It will always skip to kind of, kind of like the same position and it, you won't get the wavy line. It will just not move because you always skip the entire wave. Uh, but if you get into the comma values, then you get the wavy line and that's what we're looking for. We're going to make, uh, we're going to try to just plug this in into the x value of our, of our guy because right now it's moving straight down, right? It's moving at a constant speed down, but it's not moving horizontally. We're going to take this sinus function. We're going to plug it into the horizontal movement. So maybe we're going to get some wavy, curvy movement, huh? And it's not that difficult here. So let's try this. Uh, my n.sx. Uh, equals sign. Now again, we said we have to plug in something that is not integer, right? So like t wouldn't work because that's always an integer number. That's just like the number of frames that have uh, passed and it's always an integer number. Uh, we can divide it by some number. So let's divide it by seven. That's a good weird number. Let's see how that looks like. Do I need something else? No, let's just let's see what happens. It's gonna be fine. Okay, you can see it's jittering. Ah yes. Ooh. Um, that's good, but I want it to maybe so the waves are a little bit too short. Let's make it because I want to have like those swooping waves. So if we divided the T but a higher number we get slower waves um, so let's go 45 ah yes uh, oh man look at those beautiful wavy lines and see now you don't really care that this is linear motion Technically, like vertically, it's linear motion, but you don't really care because you get the nice and swoopy lines sideways, so it looks nice and organic. It looks like he's trying to kind of like maybe find us and aim uh, on, on towards us. This is really nice. This is good. There is one problem here at ESC. Um, something I'm, I'm bothered by is a little bit is that, yeah, here, see when they're really close to the edge, close to the edge, they they kind of like stay there. It would be nice if they all kind of trended towards the center. That's something I'm looking for. Um, and we can do that as well. Um, so something we're gonna do is we're gonna say if my n dot x, if we are, if that's smaller than 32, which we kind of like already a little bit close to the border, then, and then in this case, I want our our 
speed x, our position in the horizontal, I want it to be a bit positive because we are already at the left edge of the screen. Uh, I'm going to do this mirror reverse. We are already at the left edge of the screen, right? And so what we want is to is to go maybe slightly towards the center because that's where more more like where the uh, player is going to be. So if I'm at the left edge of the screen, I want to add a bit of additional horizontal speed towards the center. So something we could do here is something like my egg, um, my end dot egg, uh, sx plus equals one. We're just going to add one. Um, that's quite a boost. Maybe you can observe it. Of course, now they're spawning on the right side. Of course, of course. Kill all of them on the right. Yeah, they, see, see, see. You, you, you could see how it got a boost and and, and it jumped, lurched towards me a little bit. That's cool. I like the lurching. That looks aggressive. That looks like he's reacting to us. Um, but also, it's, it's it's the boost is a bit extreme and it's kind of like it suddenly stops because once we are. Uh, you know, far enough uh, into the center, it, the boost suddenly goes from one to zero, and one is like significant boost. So something we can do here is we're gonna we're gonna just take how like we're gonna decrease the bo the boost gradually as it uh, leaves this kind of like dangerous area. <laughs> this is what I'm uh, how I'm gonna explain this. So we're gonna take this x, x value and we're gonna divide it by thirty two. No, that's not what I want. Um, let, let me think about this. We're going to divide it by 32, 1 minus. This is a bit of a math. This is a bit of a math thing. But basically, let's assume x was a 0. We are v touching the border of the screen. That's not good. We That's when we really want to have a significant boost to, to, uh, to our center, right? So if my, n is, uh, my x my and x is zero, then we're gonna get zero divided by 32, that's zero. So this entire parenthesis results in zero. And we're gonna get one minus zero, that results in a boost of one. That's good, that's a very high boost when my and x is zero. Now what happens if my and x was 31, like, or just, let's say it's 32 for some reason. Let's say it's 32 and we still do the math with 32. So that means it's actually already really far close to being in a safe zone, in a zone where we want it to be. So we want the boost to be minimum there. So let's do the math uh, with my, uh, my end dot x being 32. Well, then we have 32 uh, divided by 32. That's one. And then we're going, so this entire parenthesis results in one. And then we have one minus one, uh, which means that the boost is actually going to be zero. So the boost gets stronger gets stronger when we are at the edge, then we're really pushing strong towards the center. But as our enemy is getting closer to the center, by, by, by the time it reaches the corner 32, the boost drops down to zero. Let's observe this. Let's see if this works as intended. Kill the enemies on the right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Why is this guy starting? I don't want these guys. Launch these guys. What? What? It's mocking me. Oh, there we go. See, it got a little bit of a boost. Now, you see that we don't have the same on the other side, so I want to maybe do the opposite as well. Right? Uh, uh, so, right. So, 120 is kind of like the equivalent of uh, zero. If uh, the enemy is at 120, it basically touches the edge of the screen. So 20 uh, minus 32, we want to find out what the edge is that we're looking for. So it's symmetrical, it's 88. <laughs> I have a little tool here that does that for me. Right, so if my and x is greater than 88, then uh, my and uh, sx is minus equal. Um, and then we have to see, so my and x, um, minus 88 divided by 32. That's it. That's the that's math this time around. Again, doing a test. 
So if my if if the x value of of this enemy is at eighty eight at at the at the border, where the boost should be minimum, then we're gonna go eighty eight minus eighty eight. That's zero, and we divide by thirty two. That results in a zero divided by thirty two is still zero. So that's minimum boost. And if it's all the way on the edge of the screen, 120, then we're going to get 120 minus 88. That's going to be 32. Uh, and then we're going to divide it by 32, and that will result into 1, so the boost will be 1. So that's exactly what we want. Perfect. And I didn't have to even have to look at my old code. I did it all from my head. Um, this is not necessary. Like If you're like, what is he doing here? This is not necessary. Just tweaks. I'm just like tweaking the behavior. I'm just making sure that the enemies kind of like are moving towards the screen. But you saw how it worked before. It wasn't like catastrophic, right? It wasn't. Cat it wasn't like the enemies were like just doing something senseless, and I was like con uh, confused by this. It was fine. It was fine. It worked. So I'm. If you're like, I don't know, man. I this is this is uh, above my pay grade. That's okay. That's okay. Um, you can you can just as well just skip this part and just like leave it at the sign. I think that was a, also a successful result. Yeah, but no, this is, looks good. Yeah, this looks good. We get we're getting the boosts. We're getting the guys being nudged towards the center. That's good. See how this guy started on the edge and was got boosted. Yeah, that's really nice. Really nice. Perfect. Good. Move on. I think we got this enemy basically figured out. Let's move on to the red guy. So the red guy is, I was thinking that, um, and this is really just like design now, and I'm, I'm just like, I have some ideas. Maybe this is wrong ideas. You guys let me know. So I wanted to have the green guy to be just like default, standard guy, um, very simple. I think it's a good idea when you design different enemies, not to just have, okay, now we're just gonna take this enemy and just like stronger, right? Like this is not good design. That's something that happens quite often where it's like, oh, we're just gonna give this enemy, this enemy gonna be the same, but just has more health. That's not good. Um, because you just get like, okay, then it takes longer to kill the enemy, but it doesn't really introduce new ideas. It doesn't introduce like strategic uh, considerations. So what I want to do now is maybe the red guy uh, to be something that is... Um, I, basically with each enemy I want the player to reconsider um, the priorities. Now, which of the enemies, because I, have, I only can kill one enemy at any given time, and I want the, and the, the player kind of weigh the different dangers that the enemies represent against each other. Um, the green guy is kind of like the baseline, not big of, an, uh, of, a, of a danger. The red guy, I want this red guy to be kind of like, oh, okay, this is actually difficult. This is actually something that might be dangerous. So I want, it will shoot differently. That's what I'm going to come, come to that later. Uh, but I also want this guy to be aggressive. I want this guy to feel aggressive. Um, so you might be inclined to attack him first. So he doesn't even get to do his attack because his attack might be less predictable. Um, but... Overall, the attack will going to be follow the same uh, idea. It's just going to be um, faster and therefore difficult to more difficult to avoid um, in the way that feels uh, feels actually dangerous. Um, but to offset this, this guy will actually have uh, that's my plan. This guy will actually have less health. So it's you might go go for it first because it's easier to kill and it gets the dangerous enemy of the board, so to speak, right? So this is going to be like the one that re with each enemy I want to be thinking, okay, what is the reason for um, the player attacking this enemy first? And in this case, it's like because it has less health and because the attacks are are scary. That's what, what I want to do. I want to scare the enemy, uh, the player with this enemy. So I just copy the code here and I'm going to set, uh, I have written some things down at work, 2.5, just like faster downward speed. Uh, I'm going to keep the other stuff around. I'm also going to keep this boost around. Right, let's just, just go straight to um, wave 2, where the enemies appear. Alright, this is the green enemy. Alas, something went wrong. There's no attacks happening. Let us look what the problem is. Red guy, red guy. Ah, I see the problem. I didn't do the move 
function. The move function is something we might actually do for every enemy during the attack. Might be a good idea. Just like do, just do a universal move. Don't don't be don't do it because we're always going to move enemies. And there's not not going to be enemy where it's like, oh, actually this enemy not is not moving during the attack run, right? That's not, not going to happen. And if that happens, then we can still set the speed to zero. Yeah, as you can see, these are way more more hectic. Now, because they're moving faster downwards, um, I'm thinking maybe uh, I'm gonna make the wavy a little bit, a bit wavier. So let's set it to um, 25. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. Oh, this looks more hectic now. This is good. It feels like, oh no, which, you know, like when you encounter somebody, it's like, oh no, which way I, I avoid this person? The person is avoiding the same way. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. They're really fast. So if they're coming at you, you are like, whoa, you need to really get out of the way. Good. So this feels more aggressive. Don't have to code new stuff. That's kind of good. Actually, let us let us maybe even tweak it further down. Let us tweak it down to 20 because I want to feel the the urgency in his movements. I want to, I want to see the the yeah 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 yeah. See? Yeah, I I want it to feel like like because this one like compared to this like the green guy is like oh I'm going to talk and the other was like no. <laughs> it's like he drank his energy drink, you know. Let's get, let's get. Uh, okay, let's just move on uh, and talk about this guy because this is going to be an interesting one. So this is the spinny ship, and with this guy, I want to try something that is um, it's going to be controversial. Um, so there's an att attack pattern that I really like. All right, so if we have our spinny ship, uh, I'm going to paint it red. Uh, let's uh, no, let's actually paint the actual ship. It's kind of like. I don't know. I forgot how what it looks like exactly. So this is our spinning ship. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go down first, just like it would be regular ones. And I don't even in this in this case, I'm not even going to do any sign motions, just like straight down. And let's say this here is our ship. And once it's at a level with our ship, what it does, it will change. It will do something else. It will then go sideways towards our ship. Now at this point, it will be locked into this. Like it won't actually follow our ship. Like if we fly away, if we then go there, that's fine. It will just go straight and continue going on in this direction. It just basically goes down until it sees us in a side, side window and then it veers sideways and just keeps going. And then if we get out of the way, that's fine. We avoided it. But if we stay put and ignore it, then we're gonna get smashed. That's the idea. Uh, I'm doing this because I think a lot of people who design enemies, they like to, I think, design enemies that just follow the player. Um, just like, okay, we, and we can do that. I could show you the the uh, algorithm for just like honing in on the player like a homing missile. Uh, and I, actually people on Discord already start doing this um, with their enemy patterns. And the problem with that is I think for shmups, it's kind of boring. Uh, it, you think it's a good idea like, oh, you know, the enemy is trying to chase you, you know, chase you down. Uh, the problem with that is, um, well, first of all, um, if you have multiple enemies, they will all just tend to clump up together. Like if you try to run away, they will start following you and they all just like all the enemies will just kind of like by the math, by the dynamics of the situation, will all just clump together and you have like this huge swarm of enemies following you around. And at this point, it's like, it doesn't really matter. You have multiple enemies. There is all basically just one huge blob of enemies. It could be just as well one enemy. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the other problem is like, um, I think if you have an attack that is leveraged against you in any kind of video game, it's it's nice if there's, or it's, I think it's important to think about how to avoid that attack. What is the thing that you're supposed to do? And with the enemies that just like hone in on you, there's just really nothing you can do nothing not even smart you can like you can shoot them down first okay but then okay i just shot, shot them down and basically i could have just made a timer like i didn't even have to like it's it doesn't feel like there's 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 any skill involved it's just you just shoot, shoot down the enemy and if you don't shoot it down you die i guess <laughs> right um and in this case 
you know, you can shoot it down before it even gets to you, before it does the sideways attack. So that's all in one possibility. But also you can, if you if you weren't there, if it was all, all the way off screen and if it already does the sideways attack, you can still, still dodge it. There's a way of dodging this, which if the enemies are honing down on you, it's there is no way of dodging this. You cannot just, like, you cannot just go out of the way and it'll continue flying, right? Um, so I think this is a better way of achieving a similar result where it feels like the enemy is hunting you, trying to out trick you, but uh, one that is not just like like a zombie honing down on you and following you around, right? Let's try to implement this. Now I will say that this uh, implementation will probably... Uh, I, I already had some comments that people don't like this attack. It's it's a bit insidious, so we don't maybe don't want to overuse this 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 attack. And maybe we want to make sure that we maybe tweak the speeds. Maybe the speeds I have here are not really that great. I mean, we could do is multiple ways. We could do like a small state machine here because basically there's two states. One the state is flying down and waiting for, you know, for the player to arrive in a side mirror, in a side window. Um, and and then the second state is kind of like going sideways, right? But um, I want to maybe use the variables that we have available to kind of like maybe we can we can get away without it. So let's say if um, if um, my n dot s x if that equals zero, then and that's basically flying down. And if it's not zero, then we're not flying down, then we are flying sideways. And this is basically two states. We are just using the SX as a this sideways speed to find out which state of the two states we are basically in. It's kind of like a mini state machine, but we're not using a special mode. We don't have to invent a new property. Uh, all right, so when we're flying down, what is our job? When we're flying down, our job is to maintain downward speed. So we're going to go my, uh, my n dot s y uh, is... Uh, we're going to do a downward speed. Um, let's just set it to one for now. We're going to see that it about... Because I want to actually see things happening. And so we're flying down, and then we're going to see if the enemy is sideways, uh, is, is next to us. So we're going to do, like, we are the enemy <laughs> in this case. <laughs> if ship, shop, ship dot uh, y, so the, the vertical position of the ship, if that's smaller or equals my, my n dot y, so we are, if we are at the same level, or if the player is actually already above, that means we have to start the attack. And then, now we have to find out in which direction we're going. So if um, ship dot x, if that's smaller than my n dot x. So if if it's if we're to the left, then in this case we're going side uh, negative. So we're going to go my n dot s x equals again minus one. We're just going to use a slow speed. Uh, else my n uh, dot s x one. There's there's an easy way of doing this, but we're not going to complicate this episode even further. Uh, right. So if we're on the left, if the ship is on the left of the enemy, then it will go negative, and if it's and otherwise it will go positive. Now, once we set the speed, uh, the horizontal speed to something, uh, then we are no longer flying down. Now we're flying sideways. Um, yeah, something I would also maybe do here is uh, I'm going to set the vertical speed. Um, SY. I'm going to zero it out. So we're not going vertically anymore. We're just going sideways. Okay. And we're flying sideways. We're just doing nothing. There's nothing for us to do anymore. So actually, we're not doing here anything anymore. It's fine. We're good. It's good. Oh, let's let's go to let's test it out. Let's go to the wave number three. There, here he comes. Here comes that boy. Oh yeah, he's attacking me. But nah, bro. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Ah, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. They're a bit slow, though. You have to say, oh, <laughs> we flew. I flew. 
I didn't even want to. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's already working. See, sometimes the fast attacking, I mean, don't get me wrong, getting, if, if this guy gets faster, he definitely gets more dangerous. But also sometimes the slow moving enemy that you see that is taking up space is actually uh, difficult in its own right. Yeah, this is this is a good guy. This guy, this guy knows what's up. I think he's a bit slow, so I'm gonna make him twice as fast. And that's that's the the part where people go like, oh, "What what you doing there? What you doing? This is this is reckless." But yeah, I think he needs to be fast. I think he needs to be deadly uh, in order for him to be like, "Oh no, we have to get rid of that guy." See now? Oh yeah 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 yeah. This is good. Mm, yes, yes. See how they're coming in? See how they're coming in? Mm. Okay, we got this covered. Uh, there's uh, one last thing, the yellow ship. Uh, that's going to be a very, very easy, I think. Uh, this is going to be, this is a, I'm thinking, this is a bit of, bit of a capital ship situation. It's kind of like a heavy gunship kind of thing. It will have a very special shooting function. We're going to take care of that later. But for now, uh, something I want to focus here on is... I want to make it flow, uh, fly slowly, so I'm something like 0 0.5, just like slowly, tuk, 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 you know, going towards us, and then maybe it will shoot in this very special way. But otherwise, um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be doing any fancy flying maneuvers. I think we do that with our other enemies. Maybe even slower. I'm thinking even slower. Again, the, the idea is that something that's very slow, that actually something that might be actually to some extent more dangerous because it's like, oh, it's 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 taking up space, right? Uh, and then maybe I'm gonna say like, if um, my n dot uh, y, if that's greater than, let's say 110, then, and if so, if it's low enough on the screen, I want it to actually accelerate because if it's all the way down there, then, um, uh, you know, it's not doing us any, any good. So in this case, I want to actually, I want to go faster. Let's, let's see how that looks. So yeah, it's doing like this attack run. Tuk, 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 tuk. Oh no, it's, it's coming, it's coming. It's going to eat me. No, no. Oh, I got off the way. Oof. And so if it's all the way at the bottom of the screen, it's just going to leave the screen. That's good. Um, some things I want to do now we have enemies that leave the screen sideways. That's something that we have to keep in mind. That's I did not not did not forget. Um, so we have had to go in an update function and we're going to have to um, make our remove enemies uh, function a bit more robust. Um, let's see, where is it? Enemy animation, enemy leaving the screen, see? Uh, we're only checking if the enemy is leaving the screen uh, on the bottom edge of the screen, but we also want to make, make sure that if the enemy is leaving uh, the screen sideways, then it will also get deleted. So we're going to go, if enemy is greater, uh, y is greater than 128, or my n dot x is smaller than, let's just say, minus 8, or my n... Uh, dot x is greater than 128 uh, then so like if any of those cases uh, happens then we leave the screen and actually we might even uh, because I, okay it's not happening that the enemies are leaving the screen on the top edge yeah okay we, we, for now let's gonna let's, let's see this be because I think this will actually cause some problems you will see in a second uh, let's go back to wave number zero <laughs> There's enemies missing here, you see? There's there's no enemies here. There's there's a row missing here. And the problem is that we are removing enemies um, as they're flying in. Uh, because they're off screen basically when they're flying in. Uh, this gets triggered too early. So I want to make sure that, that we only remove enemies uh, with, when their mission is not set to fly in. So if my n dot mission is not equals fly in, then if my n so like a two if statements um, into each other, I could put it in one big if statement, um, but I don't I don't like mixing and match. It it gets very really confusing very very easy. 
just basically checking if our enemy's mission is not fly in, if it's attacking or just staying in place. And if that's the case, you want to make sure that if it's somewhere off screen, then just delete it. Perfect. Good. There's uh, more things I wanted to add. Oh man, this episode is getting late, but uh, let me let me do one more thing. Let me do one more thing. I, because I teased this last time around, so I would be bad if I if I don't do this right away. So I wanted to say like um, we want to kind of improve upon the um, uh, Space Invaders formula, and it is kind of like very arrogant of me, I know, because this game has been around and it's very very beloved, and I don't know if I can improve a bit, but I I I have an idea. And maybe that was actually already part of original Space Invaders. You guys, let me know. Um, but something I'd like to do here, or want to try here, is that you, um, right now it's kind of like very surprising when an enemy comes out, right? It's like, oh, an enemy just suddenly jumps off. But it would be cool if there was a subtle hint that, that an enemy is preparing to launch an attack, and then you can shoot them down uh, earlier before it even starts the attack. And maybe you get extra points for this, but also like, you know, you can maybe see some hints. Oh, there's an enemy about to attack. I'm going to fly over and I'm going to attack them. Uh, and it, it adds more, more skill to, to uh, and strategy to the entire thing. You can kind of like get an idea of where attacks are about to happen. I think this is going to be more fun this way than just reacting to the attacks as they already happen. It feels like you're always too late uh, when uh, the attack is already happening, right? Because it's easy just to say, like, oh, oh, the enemy is attacking, I'm just not going to go there, you know, it's like, you do your thing, buddy. But if you can see that it's about to attack, you can think that maybe, oh, maybe you have to judge. Like, am, am I am I close enough to intercept this guy before he actually uh, does the attack run, right? Especially for the red guys. Um, there's multiple ways in which we can achieve this. One simple way is I want to maybe change the animation speed uh, uh, to just go faster, the animation speed go faster. Um, let me see where we're doing this. So this is an update function. Uh, 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 moving enemies, there we enemy animation. We have the 0.4, that's the current animation speed that we have. I want this to be a property of the enemies. Any speed, any SPD. I'm gonna create this, uh, this property, any SPD, when we're spawning the enemies. Uh, yeah, somewhere here, I don't know, my n dot, any SPD, and we're going to set it by default to 0 0.4, but when the enemy is nominated as an attacker, we increase the animation speed to, to double what it was before. So when we are uh, behavior, uh, let's see, when we are picking an enemy and we're ch um, changing the mission from protect to attack, we're going to go my n dot. Uh, any SPD, uh, and then it's like multiply equals two, uh, which means like it's basically like plus equals, but instead of plus, instead of adding or, or subtracting, we we do multiplication. The the star, the asterisk is multiplication, so we multiply it by two. Okay. <laughs> so right now the enemies will have a faster. Uh, animation when they're attacking you can see that they're more you know um, moving faster but this is not what we want we want to have the enemy to be kind of like you can see him getting ready right and we actually have the capabilities of doing this already because you see we have this weight function we have this wave weight property we can set him to be attacking but then we're gonna set weight and I think this is this is really nice. This is uh, the, this kind of weight property is always nice to have for a lot of objects on the screen. We're gonna set weight to thirty. It's gonna wait a second, but it will already you can see it already you know <laughs> getting getting all hyped up. Can you see it? I don't see it. Maybe I was wrong. Let's make the uh, animation speed to four. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. It was just a little bit too. It's it's a bit too subtle. Yeah, there we go. And guy in the middle about to attack. 
Um, I think 60, so two seconds is okay as a as a warning. Let's maybe the, make the uh, lower the animation speed to three. There we go. There's a guy attacking, and now he's going. Another guy. Oh, there's there's another guy over there. Yeah, yeah. You can see it. You can you can. And now to drive this um, uh, home even more, I want to in actually introduce another property. Another property. So I'm going to go into the make sprite function. And so it's going to be a universal property for all of our sprites. Um, uh, so it's going to be a partner to the flash property. We're going to also have a my sprite shake. And it's going to be like a countdown timer, maybe, or just like a true or false, maybe. I don't know. Uh, let's, let's make it a countdown timer. So basically, uh, if it, it's set to zero, it's not, there's not going to be any shaking, but if, uh, shake is set to some number that we will start counting down uh, and for if it's greater than zero we're gonna just move it sideways a little bit uh, and we're gonna go to the tools function and we're gonna implement it there so in the where is it where is it where is it where is it, where is it? star field no 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 draw my sprite right <laughs> right now it's just like one line but now now is the part where we actually make it gonna make it a bit more complicated so we're gonna say if my SPR dot uh, shake is greater than zero, then my SPR dot shake minus one, uh, minus equal one. And then we have to wiggle around the X coordinates. So we're going to create two helper variables, um, a local uh, SPR X equals uh, my SPR X. I'm going to grab the X and Y position from our object that we are about to draw. We're going to um, grab them and we're going to use those helper variables to actually draw our sprite on the screen. Just want to make sure that I... Yeah, okay, that's good. And if the shaking is happening, if we are so, if the enemy is currently shaking, and then we're gonna mess around with those variables. I'm gonna just mess around with the x variable for now. Um, we're gonna go plus plus equals. Um, let's go sine. Let's go sine. Um, t divided by twenty. Why not? Let's try that. So we, now we should, should see the guys shaking. Uh, there is there's a guy shaking. It, it's a bit too slow. It's way too slow. We're gonna divide it by a lesser number. Let's go seven. I think se we had a seven in, 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 at the beginning, right? Oh, there we go. There is a guy shaking. It's not really shaking. It's more like moving sideways. Let's just let's let's make it like two or something. Like so it's something that's really crazy. Two is maybe a bit too too little. Yeah, two two is invisible. Let's go. Oops, let's go three. Yeah, there, there's a guy shaking. There's a guy shaking. That's good. Ah oh, yeah. Um, let's go three point five so we get more messy numbers. Mm, and maybe we're gonna um, go ABS. So we're gonna just uh, shake in one direction because now it's shaking in two directions, but maybe I wanna just shake it in one direction. Maybe that, that actually changes. I'm not sure if it actually changes something because of flooring issues. Yeah, there we go. There's, there's a guy shaking. It's, it's a bit more messy now. And you can see I have all the time in the world to, to actually intercept them. Let's do 2.5. I, I feel like I, I can. We can still get a more even shake. <laughs> he got me. <laughs> I'm actually into it right now. All right, guys, so this episode was already, it's, it's way too long. We probably already breached the one hour mark. Uh, so let's move on swiftly to the dog zone. All right, and the doggy zone is not gonna be too surprising. Something I want you to do.
is to create your own enemy with its own behavior. That's my goal for you. So I want you to you know, create your own sprite. You probably have little sprites lying around. You can use all the sprites that we have here that are still unused. Absolutely go for them, one of those guys. Also, you can draw your own enemy. That's also fine. Sit down with paint or with some kind of uh, sketchbook. Come up with some kind of like movement patterns that you like, that you're interested in, and then try to implement them using our little, uh, little, uh, you know, attacking function here, right? The do enemy function. The way we did it with the red guy, the way you did this with the sp spinny ship, do some kind of attacking animation. Don't make it too complicated. It's fine to just make it go zigzag and then maybe some kind of twisty thing. I don't know. Um, it's not like, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Don't try to be too like, like in, you know, this mind blowing thing. Just like a, sometimes just like simple thing, simple kind of movement works best. And of course, something that would be really great, share it with others because maybe you can create like this repository of cool, interesting enemy behaviors. Share it on the Discord, share it down in the comment section. That would be really, really nice. Now, this is the part where also I will say a big, big, big thank you to the people who made this show possible over at coffee.com. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazy devs. Right, right, so this was a monster, a monster of an episode. But uh, as you can see, there's just a lot of little details that, that, that we need to get down to, to make this, this game come to life. And it does come to life. Like we're getting there. I think, I think especially those, those recent additions, I can already feel you know, the gameplay gripping my guts. And we're gonna continue with this gut gripping thing in the next episode where we're gonna add more tweaks and maybe we even move on to the enemy bullets. See you on the next episode, guys. Bye-bye.